Hello there, it's Carrie with The Gilded Bubble, and today I am making a triple batch of my kitty soaps. So three batches at one time, lots of math, and I didn't screw it up. I know, I know, it's shocking. I didn't screw it up. So before we get started, I do want to say I master batched my lie. I am doing three separate soaps, three separate batches, although I do two batches and then the third batch, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, but I'm also using a lot of different colors, a lot of different scents, and uh, it's going to be a blast. So hang tight. I'm over here right now hiding some of my scents because they're custom blends, but I will tell you some of the notes that are in them. But the colors I'm using are Wicked from Mad Micah's. Slightly out of focus, so there I go again. You know me. I can't keep things in focus in the camera. Koi, also from Mad Micah's. It's a really bright orange. I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Poppycock, which is a nice golden coppery color. Love it. One of my faves. And Tahitian Teal, also from Mad Micah's. You're going to love this one. Pow Pow Purple, the only purple I own. My favorite purple. And Three Olive Martini, which I need to reorder because I have that little guy and it's almost empty. Um, so the scents that I'm using, one of them is going to be my coconut, coconut, cucumber, lime, uh, and, uh, mint and basil scent. The other one is going to be a custom blend I made of Earl Grey tea. And the last one is going to be fresh peach from nature's garden. So that one's not a surprise, although I did have to mix a second peach scent in with it because it wasn't quite coming out the way I wanted. Um, but yeah, so I had to find, I finally found an Earl Grey tea that I liked but I had to make my own blend to do it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But it actually has that nice bergamot scent, which it does contain. I will say this. I did use the bergamot fragrance oil from Nature's Garden, and it is chef's kiss, amazing bergamot scent. If you are looking for a good bergamot, that is a good one. Anyway, enough about the stinky bits. You'll notice I've already added some of my lye water solution into my base oils, and I'm stick blending that up to get it not even to trace. I am going just for emulsion because one of the soaps that I'm doing is going to be a swirl. So I don't want this set up too much. What I'm going to do is once I get it um, measured out into individual pitchers, then I'm going to stick blend a little bit more because I do want it set up in order to use my scraper, which you know I have to use for my cat soaps. I think this is probably what the third or fourth video I've done on these cat soaps. I mean, these things, people love them, and I love making them as messy as they are and as hard as they are for me to do. And I do mean I, difficult, meaning they take, they're the most time consuming. There are some soaps that are just more time consuming than others, obviously, and in the pot or a drop swirl, you know, those are going to be your, your quickest ones if you're going to color anything or, you know, you're going to use more than one color. This is insane, and I don't know why I decided to do three at once, but your girl was feeling ambitious, and I did a lot of math. I double and triple checked my math. I measured in both ounces and grams to make sure I got everything right, and I then I checked all my math again. So um, I had a panic moment. I did. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I had a panic moment when I unmolded, and I'll talk about it when we get there. But you know me. I can't. I feel like I can't soap without messing up. Anyway. So I am pouring this off. This color here, this is Wicked, and it is going to be the base for my Tuxedo Kitty soap that I'm making, which is actually a custom order that I'm doing. Um, this one is actually, I'm so excited to do it. Um, I had a customer ask for a Tuxedo Kitty teal background and um, the Earl Grey tea scent, the bergamot and black tea. So I had to finally get the blend where I wanted it, um, which I had been playing with already behind the scenes. So um and so I'm adding a little bit of that to this. This is going to be the bulk of the cat. And then I'll add the rest of that to the background color. I've also got a fun little embed, a little cane mold heart that I use to make the muzzle of the cat. It's so stinking cute. But this one, I need this to set up a little bit more because it has to get to a consistency where I can um, scrape it. And it happens faster if I blend it faster. It gives me a little more time to work if I start with it fluid. So it's setting up okay for me, but I'm not, um, it's not at a scraping consistency. And there, of course, is my handy dandy scraper from Print 3D Simple. But I am going to pour a little bit here in the bottom so that I can set my uh, cane in here. Um, it needs to be sitting on top of something or I'll have a, I'll have a gaping hole in the bottom. Um, and we don't want that. We want our soap to be cute. So I had already pre-measured and cut this to fit the mold. And man, did it just fit. In fact, I think it, it kind of came out a little crooked because 
of the way that I set it in there. Not that you would notice from soap to soap, but it was definitely from start to finish, but you can see. What's nice is I don't have to worry about this floating up because of the way that it's fitting in there. What I did have to worry about though, as you can see, are um, the sides of this mold bowing in. It's still doing it. Um, my husband has offered to make me new frames for these molds because these are the size I like to use for these cats. They come out in a nice little square shape. I think it's perfect for the design. Um, I don't want to change it. So I need something I can use these molds in. And I have a third one that's, that's a little looser in the frame, but it's also just slightly bigger than the scraper. And I don't want to have to custom order a scraper. So I'm going to custom make a wooden frame for the mold. Oh, geez, guys. I just can't do anything the easy way. I, I just, I'm not capable of it. So this next bit that I'm pouring off is going to be for my ginger kitty. This one is going to get the peach scent and it is going to, I think this is the peach scented one. Oh goodness. Now that I say that, no, this one is, ha <laughs> ha, your girl lost her mind. No, it is the peach scented one because the, the calico kitty is going to be the cucumber, lime and mint. Um, and of course I want a little white in my ginger kitty. It looks like an orange tabby. So he needs those little white stripes. Did you know that most orange tabbies statistically are male? They're not all. It's not like a calico where the vast majority, like 99.9% .9 of calicos are female, but a good substantial chunk of, I want to say it's more than 60%. I'd have to look it up. Maybe I will. I don't know. I'm not looking it up right now, but um, yeah, the vast majority of ginger tabbies that you see are male cats. It's a little less common, but you know, everybody's got a story of having a ginger little female and, uh, I haven't had a ginger cat in a while. Ours, we had a dilute ginger, which is that like, creamsicle-y color. And, uh, that was our, our last ginger kitty. And he passed like two or three years ago now. He was, he was an old guy. I'd had him since college. So this is me weighing out my next bit of lye solution. So that is my lye water solution with my uh, salt water in there to help harden the bars up. I don't know how well it worked here. I think my issue was humidity, but anyway. Um, so this is my second of the three batches. And this is going to, I'm going to use some of um, this batch for my orange as well. And then the remaining part of the batch um, will go to my calico cat. You'll notice there that I haven't scraped out that pitcher with Wicked in it. And it's sitting there probably taunting you and you're going, Carrie, why didn't you scrape that out? Well, Carrie didn't scrape that out because Wicked is also a color in my Calico Cat. So not only is it the color I use for the Tuxedo Kitty, it is also one of the three colors I use for my Calico Kitty. And I'm just trying to get this to emulsion again. You notice that little piece of paper keeps flapping into frame. I have a, um, I have sticky notes and, and recipes and stuff taped to the wall in front of my workbench and that just happened to get into frame this time. I got to tape the bottom corner of it down. It was actually my list and instructions on how much of each soap I needed to measure out because I did the math. I did it and it came out. So this is Koi that I'm pouring into now. And I'm actually going to also lighten this up because that is practically a neon orange. When they say Koi, it is a goldfish color. So if you are thinking of getting that color from Med Micah's, all my fellow soap making friends, it's a great color, but it's really bright. If you want a lighter orange, um, what is the one that's, um, I think always a bridesmaid's a nice little pale, and there's cantaloupe. Those are nice pale oranges. This one is an orange, orange, like brighter than an orange magic marker, but it is a great color. And I've used it in everything from, I don't know, I made a grapefruit scented soap that would look like a sunrise. I've used it in a Rocky mountain sunset soap. I've used it in this ginger cat soap. Um, it's really a versatile color if you, and, and, you know, I'm a, big proponent of you don't need to buy every mica even though it's really tempting although I have realized I need some more like pinks and reds and oranges just a little bit um because I just don't I have one I have one really pale pink and I have a really purpley pink and and neither of those are going to work uh you'll notice there too I'm mixing poppycock um which is a little more coppery but also you notice how close in tone they are at this point so I really want to lighten uh, up koi just a smidge so that's going to get well it already did some titanium dioxide um, but when I pour it you'll see a good contrast in those because they're not very similar colors at all they just kind of look that way on camera um, and I'm gonna get some of my fragrance put into each one of these make sure I have the right amount of I'm double checking that I've got roughly the right amount of batter in there because again your girl's not good with the math 
And then I've got to work kind of quickly here because what I'm doing is essentially a drop, a drop swirl. No, it's not. It's an in the pot. Um, and I want it to stay pretty fluid so that I get those swirls when I pour it into the mold and then I've got to wait for it to set up before I can scrape it. So this is why working this in three batches, I had to really plan which ones I was going to do in order. And again, I'm not scraping that because white is one of the colors for my calico soap. Look at that. And of course, here comes my last color. This is the poppycock going into that koi mixed with titanium dioxide with a swirl of titanium dioxide. And I'm just pouring that doodad right in there. Now, the only downside to doing it this way, yeah, and see, I'm also using that one in the calico. So the downside of doing it this way is that you just don't know what you're going to get, right? I could do like legit stripes that would take forever. So you can see kind of, oh, if I would put the picture on camera, Carrie, you can, there you go. You can kind of see how much darker that is than the koi uh, now that they're in the pot together. So when, when I pour this, you know, I just get whatever swirls kind of come out. I don't know what's going to happen. Um... But it really, it's so cool the way this comes out. Wait until you see it. It's going to be a while because this is a long video. I'm doing three batches. Did you hear? And this is just going to be for my overflow because this one, I know I knew when I mixed it, I had mixed more than I needed. But um, I needed that there for any extra. I almost didn't have enough in the uh, Tuxedo Kitty one. I almost didn't make enough of that wicket. I probably should have poured the rest. I think I actually end up doing that with the rest of that pitcher. I have, I realized I have to do voiceover. I can't record while, or can't do the dialogue while I record because the floor in front of my work table squeaks really loud and I like to have a fan on. So I figured, you know what, I'll just voice over and I can do it as I edit and know exactly what I did and what I didn't do and it gives me an opportunity to look things up, which I also didn't do. So I don't know why I said that. And of course, here I am doing things off camera. That's really exciting. Let me skip ahead to a better part. And through the magic of movie making, I'm now able to pour my three colors for my calico cat for the base of that soap. The first one, of course, there is Wicked. The second one here is going to be Poppycock, which was also used in um, the Ginger Cat, and the Wicked was used for the Tuxedo Kitty. And then my last one is going to be the White, which is going to be, I think, equal amounts of these. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of eh, not worry about if it's exact or not. This is actually the second of the cat soaps that I ever made, um, and none of the batches have turned out quite as well since. I think because you have this point when you're soap making where, like, you don't know what you're doing, and so you're extra careful with everything, and then you get to this point where you're like, I kind of know what I'm doing. I'm in an intermediate to advanced level. I'll just wing it, and that's when you make mistakes. And this one, the last time I did it, I did not like the way it turned out at all, and I ended up actually cutting it up and making it, um, <laughs> I actually ended up cutting it up and making it another soap. It's my, if you, if I'll, I'll put a picture of it in here, but my Rocky Mountain soap. It's a Rocky Mountain sunset, actually, and that uh, brown, black, and white you see is actually the portion that was a calico cat. And I just didn't like the way it came out. It kind of looked kind of tigery it was kind of wonky it just didn't set up the way I wanted so I went ahead and remade it and to, into into that soap which actually had a lot of fun doing and I forgot to film it it was within it was during the move between my kitchen and my soap room and it just didn't happen so this is me making a calico cat soap um, but I have some more fun soaps coming up that I will for sure record and post because I like watching different stuff you've seen me do enough cat soaps at this point um, but I just thought it'd be fun to show me doing this triple batch. So um, basically the way that I portion out these cat soaps is the cat is two thirds of the batch and the background color is a third of the batch. And when I do that, it comes out to roughly a square shape after I've scraped and everything. And that little bit of excess I have usually makes me a few sample pieces, which is fine. It's not a lot of over. Um, in fact, if I didn't have that, it wouldn't be able to scrape very well. So it works out. However, Doing that, I realized in order to scale up a way mathematically that I could manage it, my brain could process it, I had to do three batches at once, which was fine because I needed to redo both the Ginger Kitty and the Calico Cat, and that was fine. Um, and then I had that custom order come in, so it worked out perfectly. Um, but having to manage three different scents, which two, two of which were blends, um, having to manage, thankfully they're all very similar colors. Good Lord, thank God it was that. Um, but the, between all of that, 
the math that I had to do, I was so worried I was going to mess it up. So I double and triple checked everything. And so part of the reason why this is so slow going is it's me kind of going, okay, did I do this? Did I get the scent in it? Did I do that? Did I get the right color? Do I have the things I want? And then at this point, these need to be pretty thick for me to plop them in the mold because to make those calico cat spots. And I didn't thicken them up quite as much as I probably should have. I was worried I was getting too thick and it was going to set up too fast. And I should have just gone, you need, you need heavy trace. You need thick trace. Some people call it one. Some people call it the other. I don't care. Um, You need it to be pretty thick. It needs to be like, um, almost like a, like almost frozen pudding it's so it seems to be so thick so um i don't want it to be soap on a stick but it has to be thick enough for it to be spooned and plopped in and this came out just a little tigery but these soaps came out looking a lot better than the last batch i did so that one just never set up right and its ears weren't pointy that was part of the problem this one at least i got pointy ears so it looks like an actual cat even though it's a little more tigery than calico Still technically calico, though. Calico cats have, you know, three colors in their coat. They have the black, the white, and the the gingery brown to them. These three colors here. Imagine that. So while I'm mixing, I'm going to fast forward you a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll look at how I make this soap. And while that's setting up, we're going to start scraping away at my tuxedo cat because it's nice and firm. You'll see how it's that nice, thick, gloopy... It's actually thicker than pudding because... It's more like almost almost solidified jello. Like you want it really thick. And I'm moving that around because I realized I had just enough soap in there to do the scrape. And of course, because the sides are bowing in, it's given me a headache. See my hair sticking out there. I'm so quiet. I'm like holding my breath, watching myself do this. But you can see with that mold being warped like that, what's happening for me. And uh, it's so frustrating. It get, it'll get, it, I actually got most of the bowing out. The, the batch itself is just fine. But of course, it gives me these wobbly looking things while I'm doing. And this scraper, telling you what, I love using the scraper. I do. But this one with the cat ears, because the way it's got the holes, it's just so hard to get that excess out of there. And uh, drives me crazy. Time to color your hair, Carrie. Jeez. So yeah, it just takes a few scrapes here. And actually, I'm going to end up coming back to it later just to make sure I got it as defined as I wanted. Um, but this ensures that I get, you know, the bulk of the soap out of it. And you can see how very little I had left over here. I almost didn't have enough. So I'm real careful about making sure I have enough because otherwise you don't get those really sharply defined um, pointy cat ears, which is the cutest part of the soap. No, it's not. This, the whiskers are the cutest part of the soap. Real cats, though, the cutest part of them is their nose. I like a boop. I like to boop a nose. Any, any of my other friends out there nose boopers? There goes my nasty ass hair again. I do have it all pulled back. Like I'm not getting hair in my soap. I've got a headband on keeping it away from my face. But when it gets under that camera, man, it's real cute, ain't it? I have one binder clip and here I am like living on a dream here with the binder clip trying to hold this thing together. Oh goodness, I need more binder clips. The binder clips do help. But again, I'm just holding out hope. Uh, that my husband's going to make me a good wooden frame. I don't know if my frame shrunk. I d I've been real careful about not getting them wet other than to like wipe them down when they get soap on them. But maybe that's what I did. I don't know. If any of you out there have that, that mold in that frame and don't have that problem, let's talk. I want to know what you do. If you do have that problem, let's talk. We'll commiserate. Leave a comment. Trust me. So yeah, I'm going to clean this off because I definitely don't want black in my orange. And I'm going to get it as clean as I can, grabbing a paper towel off camera, of course, because why? Why put things on camera? You know how all these soap makers, I see all these people make videos and like they only have the thing in the frame that they're working on. My table's not that big, y'all. I don't have room for that. I don't have extra surfaces. This is it. What you see on camera, I've got about a foot on either side of that. And that is it. So everything I'm using is like sitting right there. And then, so I'm going to start, try scraping this and realize real quickly that it's not as solid as I want, but I'm going to go ahead and get some of the excess out anyway. Um, it so blends in with my uh, scraper. It's like the same color. 
And then I'm just adding that to that same soap. I end up making quite a few of these little soaps, um, and they look very Halloween-y. <laughs> One of them looks like a calico cat, though. It's cute. But what I'll do usually is cut those up into sample sizes for people to try. Wee! You didn't see that. You didn't see it. Look at how less messy I am than I normally am, though. Like, I made three whole batches and didn't make near the mess I usually make with one. Like, what is going on with me this day? It, did I, does it invasion of the body snatchers? Freaky Friday? I don't know. Something was going on. I know what it was. It's because my mom wasn't here. She usually helps me so I can keep things clean and, and get everything I need when I'm, if, if I'm having to work fast, the, the, the stumbling over my words. Um, she usually helps me with all that stuff, but I don't remember why. I think she had, she's out running errands or something. I don't know. She couldn't come by. She's retired. So she has all the free time in the world. And she and my stepdad got vaccinated for COVID, the coronavirus, the beer, whatever you want to call it. I've heard people call it all kinds of things. There's a YouTuber, um, Vivian Tries, I'll link that, calls it the fungalitis, kills me every time. So I probably shouldn't mention it in my video or they'll probably like be like, nope, you can't talk about that. That is not a thing that people can talk about. So that still needs more time setting up, but we're going to go with it. And pretend like it doesn't. And therein is our downfall. That's too, it should be heaping spoons. I should be able to like, it should hold its shape on the spoon and it's not. So Carrie should have waited. I have no patience, y'all. None. It's hereditary. Both my mom and my dad, neither one of them have patience. My dad's a little worse than my mom, but not by a whole lot. <laughs> So I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch it, watch me plop this in. But essentially, I take all three colors and just keep plopping it in. If it were thicker, it would look more like calico patterned spots. And uh, this just ended up being a little more tiger stripey. So I could have just poured it and it would have been just fine. I wouldn't have had to take all this time. And uh, there's my head again. Look at that. Um, but yeah, this actually turns out fine. It's just eh, should have been just a smidge thicker.
things cleaned up. I'm going to let that one sit for a while. And we're going to go back to trying to scrape the heck out of this little ginger kitty. And there, that's getting a much nicer shape. It's holding its shape good. Oof, love it. And you'll see there off to the side, I've started my um, scrap bars. Um, and I think if I did that, well, I will do this in the future because this was actually not that hard to do the triple batch. Mm, uh, not that hard. Well, famous last words, right? But I think I'll be more careful in the future about how much excess I have to worry about because that's a lot of scrap kind of soaps. And, you know, I could have, if I would have, that's supplies I could use to make profit from as opposed to that stuff's either going to be personal use or cut up into samples. So, you know, uh, it adds up over time. But this just, oh, wait till you see the cut on this one. This one's not real exciting to see in the mold because it just looks like a big orange blob right now. And of course, the scraper is the same color. So it looks like a big orange blob on the scraper. Um, but by continuing to scrape this, you get a lot of the excess out of there. And then I slide it kind of up the side and then scrape the side off with the spatula. I've got, like I said, I've gotten so much better at not being as messy. I mean, look, there's so little, there's a little bit of globin sitting over there on the side. How do you people soap? How do you YouTubers soap? and not have soap all over your table how how do you just edit it out i don't believe in that <laughs> i don't need you to think i'm perfect i'm not perfect it's soap it cleans up you know if i were to let that sit there i could scrub the thing down with itself but i usually clean it up with some vinegar when i'm done to neutralize the lye in it just in case don't need to stick my arm in it no more lye burns for me i had one that was enough that sh that, that shit hurts don't let anybody fool you like I'm, I don't, I'm not, I'm not afraid, you know, I, I've had a lie burn. I know what it's like. It's, it's painful. Um, but if you follow the MSDS with your, with your, you know, chemicals, flush it with water usually is what they recommend, you know, neutralize it with, with vinegar. If it's not on your skin, there's my nasty hair again. <laughs> um, if you do that, you know, it's not so bad. It's when you get it on you and don't realize it right away that, you know, I had, and thank God I was wearing protective eyewear. I had a spot end up right above my eyebrow and, um, it burned. I mean, worse, worse than the worst cooking burn you've ever had. I mean, that's, that's how bad it burns. So imagine if it had been a bigger spot or I had left it on longer, which this did get left on me pretty long. Cause I didn't realize it's such a small spot. And then suddenly it starts to burn like kind of like lemon juice in a paper cut. And then it progressively gets worse. So, you know, I, I would say don't be afraid of using lye, but be cautious with it, especially if, if, you know, if you're considering taking up soap making and you're not already a soap maker, do your research. Please do not soap the way I do. I don't even wear long sleeves, which is a no-no. The reason I don't is because I sweat so bad and then I drag my sleeves through things. It's more dangerous for me, but it's if I were to get lie on me, I know what that's going to feel like. I know how to take care of it. I have precautions. The worst thing that could happen is getting lie in your eyes. Um, and I'm very careful with my protective eyewear. I'm very careful with wearing gloves because that's the part that touches it, except for that one time we won't talk about. Um, but, you know, never, ever, 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 ever use lie without protective clothing. You know, I wear closed-toed shoes. Like, I, I don't want it on my body. It just, it hurts. So... I'm going to clean up my molds here and then take a little break and let this one set up a little more because I'm not sure that it's quite set up yet. But look at me being a clean soaper. No, I forgot to hit record. So I didn't get the scraping of my calico cat that you can see there off to the side. But look at all those color differences. Isn't that great? So here I am on my third batch of soap. This is going to go all to the background colors so this is an easy one i mix this up that's my lye solution going in again i master batch that when i measured it out it was exactly where it should be down to the gram oh that just makes me feel so great so i'm going to stick blend this and then divide it up three ways for my different backgrounds so how i'm splitting up the backgrounds here again i have to keep the scents straight which i didn't mark them i just think goodness i have a good sense of smell i smelled them and was able to determine which was which um, but for the background of my calico cat, it's going to be a just slightly lightened up pow pow purple. It'll come out a nice lavender. For the background of my ginger kitty, I'm using three olive martini again with just a smidge of titanium dioxide to make it come out a pale green. And then the tuxedo kitty custom order that I'm doing, that person asked for a teal background. So we're using Tahitian teal so all i've got to do is split this three pound batch into three one pound mini batches with my colors already dispersed 
in some of my base oil. I mean, this point, this is the part I love because I love a good soap pour. I love an easy batch. I love these colors. It doesn't get any better. These are my three favorite colors that I have is Pow Pow Purple, Tahitian Teal, and Three Olive Martini. Like, these are my colors. I don't know that I would want to do a soap out of them, although I have done Pow Pow Purple, Tahitian Teal, and Blue Tide. So maybe I could. I don't know how Three Olive Martini would work with that. Well, now I got to play with that, y'all. But if you notice, yet again, oh, oh, yes, my spatulas match my mica. I made a song about the mica matching the spatula. It's not even in the same key. <laughs> Who let me have a microphone? Got to scrape all that batter out of there because, you know, I can't waste batter unless I'm wasting it after I scrape it. <laughs> Wow, I really scraped that one. But look at that, that bowl's almost empty. Damn, girl, that was good. I didn't remember scraping that well. Oh, I love that color. Look at how the nice little like light olive color of it. Oh, just watch it sit there for a second because I have a feeling I'm going to do something. Nope, I'm back. Oh, wait, what did I forget? <laughs> I'm stirring something off camera. Get it, girl. Put your damn shit on camera. I think I remember to here in a sec. Hold up. Does she remember? Nope, nope. Oh, wait, maybe. This is fun, rewatching footage that you filmed like a week ago. <laughs> you don't remember what you did. So to my empty table, I am going to add my tuxedo kitty, which is getting Tahitian teal as its background. And I went ahead and did this one first because I poured that one first and it was the most set up of all of them. So I knew I wasn't going to have any issue. There was me. You could see, you could see it off camera. I noticed what I just did. I smelled that fragrance to make sure it was the right one. <laughs> could you imagine? I ended up with like uh, Earl Grey tea and and peach actually that might not be bad wait a minute peach earl gray tea that could be kind of weird we'll see let's let's try it we're gonna try that we'll mix it together and, and try something um but yeah this is great this is my favorite part of making these cat soaps because i love seeing soap one layer pour over another and it's so nice and fluid and it's so set up i don't have to worry i can literally just oh no maybe i did try to I, so i'm trying to be all like well just in case Look at that, that little river in the middle. Oh, she's so cute, girl. This kitty's gonna be so cute. But look at that bowing. I hate that mold. Uh, hopefully this will be the last time you see me struggle with this. I have plans, many plans. If my husband can't fix it, I will just, I don't know. I'll figure something out. There's gotta be a better way. There's gotta be a better way. Look at how pretty that color is. I just love that color, so gorgeous. And it looks pretty if you lighten it up too. It's come, it's like robin's egg blue when you lighten it up. Oh, ooh, I just had an idea. Yes, I'm. I'm so. I'm in the midst of planning all my spring soaps right now. So, which will probably only be like a week or two after you see this one. So that'll be good. It'll probably be one of the next couple of videos. But I have some fun colors planned. It was very exciting. I got to pick like all kinds. I was looking at like mood boards and stuff online. So prepare yourselves. Fun stuff is coming. So that's that guy. I'm going to finish scraping this off and then we're going to go on to our next soap. Now let's get this guy out of here and we're going to pull in our lovely cutesy tootsy little orange ginger kitty. And here's my three olive martini I'm getting ready to mix up, making sure I've got the right fragrance yet again because we don't want to mix our fragrances, especially those two, because they were kind of similar. So maybe it wouldn't have been the end of the world, but um, I would know and that would bother me. So I have to double, I, I had to double sniff make just to make sure I had the right one. Yep, this is the right one. Here we go. And uh, make sure I get all that good fragrance out of there. And again, that's a little darker than I wanted just because the orange is so bold. Like that green is, it starts looking very like University of Miami <laughs> or FAMU colors, which is fine, but not what I was going for. So I don't want to make a, you know, a college team spirit cat yet. We'll think about it. You let me know. Obviously, I can do custom orders on these. So if you have a cat and you want to memorialize them in soap or, or just have a soap for they can look at it and look confused that it looks like them, um, I can pretty much do any pattern of cat. Um, it's hard for me to get a lot of fine detail, obviously, but I can do tabbies. I can do calicos. I can do uh, solids, obviously, real easy. Um, and uh, I can do tuxedos. I can do, I honestly could do a, um, like a white muzzled, you know, tabby or something. So hit me up, send me a picture of your cat. Tell me what you want. Um, I do on bulk orders, I do a discount. So you're not paying full price for those bars of soap. 
if you order the whole batch. It takes about four to six weeks for me to get that to you, depending on when I make it. it. Takes four to six weeks for it to cure. So if I can't make it right away, like for this one, I had to wait till I got a fragrance in because I didn't have that fragrance in stock. But if you if it's one of my standard ones, I can do that. Lickety split. And see, I don't know why. This one I pushed on the edge and the mold just goes, okay, we're not going to bow. Why? Why did this one cooperate and the other one didn't? Tell me. Someone tell me. Yes, I tried sticking down the sides of Vaseline. Yes, I don't want, yes, I wash them by hand so they don't get warped in the dishwasher. I haven't gotten the frames wet. I just don't know what the heck I did. They work great the first time and then after that it's like, nope, sorry, we're not going to cooperate anymore. I mean, they're, they're not exactly the world's greatest molds. They're pretty cheap, but still, come on. The only little spill I did today. Oh, look at that. Little, little gloop on the table. But that's okay. So now we get to do number three. And from that, we go to the Calico Cat. Calico Kitty. All my soaps have kitty in them. I'm not sure which is my favorite. The one that's called Party Kitty or the one that's called Yellow Kitty. Get it? Uh, uh, it's a pun. I love a pun. I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm such a dork. So I added my fragrance into that. And again, I didn't have to smell that one because it was the last one. Thank goodness. Although I probably did because this is my favorite scent. And then I'm just going to lighten that purple up just a smidge because again, you want a little more contrast and those colors are pretty dark. So it helps it a little bit. I just love the way this one comes out. It's so pretty. So, so actually I love all three of these. They're so cute. I'm trying to think I, I might, next time I do the ginger one, I might do a different background color instead of the green. Let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what background you think I should do with that orange one. What would make it pretty? Maybe I do a white? Would that be too much? I don't know. My party kitty one has a white background. I do a gray kitty with a with a conf confetti background, which is so cute. And it's a way to use all my extra little scrappies. I think I did a cutting video of that. I'll throw that in the in the cards or whatever. Ah, oh, the relaxing, relaxing soap pouring. Look at that. Oh, I could watch soap pouring all day long. It's like one of those oddly satisfying things, right? The interwebs provides. And I kept my table relatively clean. I kept cleaning in between layers here. Uh, I got a little bit of oil sitting there on it and uh, some streaks and stuff, but there's no big globs of soap. Your girl's getting better. You're not going to have much to laugh at after this. So I'm going to scrape the last little bit out of this pot. And when you come, when we, yeah, when you come back, no, when I come back, me, because you're not going anywhere, uh, you'll get to see the cut, which is honestly, let's be real, cutting soap, watching the soap being cut. That's the most exciting part. And you'll get to see it in three, two, and of course the happiest news of all, I fixed, well, okay, wait, I didn't fix it. My husband fixed my multi-bar cutter. We went and got some guitar strings, which, oh my goodness, the the young guys that worked, or young lady and young man who worked at the guitar store dug into their rando, like, opened packages and dug me out some guitar strings and gave them to us. I didn't even have to pay for them. I mean, like, how nice is that? So, uh, George's Music, if you're out there, thanks so much. Um, <laughs> but this, now this looks so super neon on the screen. It is not. It's going to mute out a little bit. So when you see the final photos, you're going to just love it. But look at how great that little swirl. Oh, look at the swirls. Oh, I love it. Some of these are really great. Like there were a couple of these bars. You can see where I stuck my finger in it though. It's still really soft. Um, and this is where I panicked. I thought, oh my God, I screwed it up again. Because the last time I made this soap, I, mi I miscalculated the lie. Oh, look at that swirl. I miscalculated the lie and the top never hardened. It is still, it's been three months and it is still not hardened. Um, but this one is already hardening up. So <laughs> I did not screw it up this time. I did, I did the math correctly, which I knew. I mean, I did the math like four times, like... Even I can't screw up math four times in a row, but I panicked because the top, but what I think happened, it was so humid in my soap room. I live in Florida, first of all, so it's always humid, but it got, I, since I did three batches, it got really warm in the room and was, I, mean, I didn't realize it till I stepped out, but it was so much more humid in the room than it was out. And I think I just need to get me a little uh, tabletop uh, dehumidifier for my room so that it uh, doesn't do that in the future. But there he is, my little ginger kitty and he cute. So next batch. 
it's gonna be the calico cat because I wanted to wait just a little longer on that custom batch in case I screwed anything up wasn't firm enough I wanted to make sure it was it was firm enough because these were still really soft and when I unmolded them I lost a little bit on the corners which is fine because those end up just being my my end scraps anyway the little sample size guys that you see there on the end so that works out okay but this one turned out so cute looks a little tigery as you can see there already um, but wait till you see it stamped it's so stinking cute so there she is see male and female the only time that, that the you know that gender even matters and only because it's more expensive to get a um, female cat desexed than it is a male one <laughs> anatomy matters in this instance that's it oh, I love it it looks so washed out so I gotta color correct this maybe huh we'll figure that out another day it's all right because you'll get to see it just fine in the finished product she's so tigery I love it <laughs> this is the real tiger king there tiger queen maybe god how, can you imagine that was a year ago we've come a long way and not not very far at all <laughs> oh look at that she's so cute Ooh, that one's nice and stripy Ooh, i like that one <laughs> i already have seen all these why am i so excited oh very pointy on that one side that must have been where it went up the side of the, the mold. All right, time for cut number three. And here is the tuxedo kitty. Look at that teal. Oh, gorgeous. And you can see just a little bit of curvature in that, but it really won't affect it. I think there was one bar that had a little bit of a, like a curvature to the outside of it, but it still looks super cute. I am not, I'm not upset about it at all. They're gorgeous, gorgeous soaps, and I cannot wait to show this to the person who ordered it. I cannot. I'm just cleaning off the uh, strings a little bit so I don't get any drag marks or any other colors transferring to this. Because again, this one was still a little sticky even several hours later. I might have even waited another day. I can't even remember at this point. But it's so stinking cute. Wait till you see this. Wait, wait, wait. The anticipation is killing me. And I know what it looks like. Oh, oh you get a glimpse. Look at that. The cutest thing of all, though, the absolute cutest thing is that the person that ordered this has a cat that looks exactly like this. It has that markings on its nose, that little upside down heart shape. Oh, so cute. So cute. Yeah, they have two tuxedo kitties, which adorable. I have one. Her name is Sudoku. Um, we never call her that because we didn't name her. She was a she was a foster fail, essentially, is what she ended up being. Um, but we don't call her that. We call her, well, I call her Miss Mama, but my husband calls her Big Mama because she's a chonk. She has finally got three hot in a cot and she is making the most of it. She likes to eat. She don't miss a meal. And she loves, she hears my voice in the morning and she comes running because she wants to be petted immediately. Sweetest cat ever. Used to live outdoors. She had three litters before she was able to be trapped and, and spayed so that she can't have any more kittens. Um, and we have one of her from her last litter. And uh, she had four boys, four tabby boys. They were so cute. Oh, I'll put, a, I'll put a kitten picture in for you, okay? So here they are when they were just about three weeks old. Eyes are just opened. They're so cute. My favorite point in life of a kitten. Here they are with their mama, their Sudoku, or Miss Mama before she was Big Mama. <laughs> and this last photo is all of them together. We have Bubba Wallace at the top, and then we have Denny Hamlin. And we have, Rust, we have Rusty Wallace and Chase Elliott. Yes, they were NASCAR kitties. We decided that because they were um, numbers, they were Sudoku's little numbers. I know, right? Isn't that cute? That we were going to name them after NASCAR drivers. And uh, all of them were current drivers at the time, except for Rusty Wallace, who was, who was my favorite driver when I was a kid. So that's where the names came from, and they're so cute. Anyway, let's stamp some of these soaps, shall we? Got to lay them all out here so I can get them ready to go stamping. Look at how fast I did that. <laughs> anyway, so to stamp these, um, I think I've told you guys before, this stamp actually comes from Print 3D Simple. Again, I'll link that in the comments, or in the comments, in the description. You know what I'm saying. Um, but I spray them with alcohol. I can usually get three, sometimes four stamps out of it before I have to spray it again. But I just push that in, and I can feel if it's flat. It sits flush against the soap, and uh, I wiggle it kind of back out. And then you get this cute little kitty face. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? I love it. I want to poop that nose. And because I waited a little bit longer to do these, 
I have just the perfect little impressions. They don't stick at all. I waited one more day after I cut them to do this. And then I'll let them sit and cure for a little while before I trim them up and photograph them. I usually do that before they're completely cured. That way by the time they're cured, I can just go ahead and pop them on the website. But look at that little guy. Ain't he cute? And then I wanted to go ahead and do the ginger kitties as well. Unfortunately, they weren't set up as well as I would like, but I'm gonna show you these first couple anyway, and then I'll come back and do them again the next day. But you can see here I'm struggling a little bit more to get it out, and it's just sticking just a little more than I would like, especially once I get a couple of them in. So I just wanna let them sit just a little bit longer to firm up because you don't wanna to wait too long because you can break your stamp. Um, but if you do it too soon, see, I'm having to push that back in. I'm starting to get a little debris left behind. So I don't want that. I think I do a third one here, and then I just go, you know what, and wait until tomorrow. This isn't, this isn't good enough. This isn't going to work for me. But I probably just needed to spray a little bit more, too. But, yeah, I wasn't real keen on the way those were turning out. So, And so the next day, I went ahead and got everything ready to go, sprayed my um, stamp again just to make sure that, you know, it's not going to stick. And I went ahead and grabbed the remainder of these kitties, these little ginger guys. And you can already see where that darker color is starting to get a, even darker than it was when I, when I originally cut. Um, and here I'm just kind of checking out that each side. See, they're just a little too crumbly still. They were sticking in my hands. I didn't like it. So... I went ahead and waited to finish them up until I did the tuxedo kitty. So I did all these together. So I'm just going to show you a couple stamps of these. And then I will show you the finished product. Isn't he cute though? But yeah, that's my ginger cat. He's so cute. I just keep saying that, don't I? <laughs> and now I'm going to go ahead and do all of my tuxedo kitties. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit of soda ash on them. I'll probably plane that off later on. Um, again, I just, the room was so damp. These soaps were still so wet when I cut them. I probably could have waited. I was a little nervous on this one because uh, embeds are how I broke my uh, multi-bar cutter in the first place. So I wanted to make sure, because that little heart shape that you're looking at, that had been setting up for three days at this point, and I didn't want it to get any harder and break my strings that I had just replaced. And now let's stamp these guys. comments are always welcome let me know what cat you want to see next and if you really loved my video and you'd love to subscribe to my channel you'll be my new best friend you can find me on instagram or facebook at the gilded bubble and if you'd like to buy any of my kitty soaps there's a whole line of them super cute you can visit thegildedbubble.com thanks so much for watching